so they faked this out guys remember last week's episode and we saw the trailer and we thought that this was going to be the episode where miss jenny was crying over summit of course that ain't happened but some other juicy things did happen in this episode so let's get into it i don't know what jenny's daughter and uh her wife know but they know something about summit they know oh, some meat they know that something is up with this dude and that he is about some mess because neither one of them are believing anything that he is saying because to meet miss jenny miss jenny's daughter and her wife they're all out to dinner and they are like grilling him as they should because guys let's be real here your mother calls you from a country that you've never been to she went over there to go uh live with some sketchy guy she's calling you from a questionable place you are looking around like where the hell are you she's telling you that she's okay but you know your mother so you know that she's very concerned and that she's probably scared and upset what do you do as an adult child you go to check on your freaking older parent and be like what is going on so they pulled up on some meat and i think they did some research on the guy because the way they were talking to him and the questions they were asking and jenny's daughter-in-law her wife she was not for it. She was sitting there quiet, but the way she was looking at the meat was like she had some tea on this dude. I really think that they did their research on him and something is not adding up for these two because they are really grilling to me. And when they're asking him these questions, he's not answering them. And that is another issue. They're just like, well, if your family says they don't want you with my mom, what are you going to do? And Samita's is just like, well, you know, you can't really pick one over the other or I don't really know. Like he's not answering the questions. And when he's not answering the questions for Jenny's daughter and her wife and for the viewers watching, for me, I'm sitting here saying, if you can't answer it, then the answer is no. Like if you can't say that you will go to your parents and say, this is who I want to be with and that's it. If you can't answer that, then the answer is no. Then the answer is that you won't do it. Guys, I'm telling you, I really think that when Samit left Jenny for two weeks, he went to get married. This dude played this woman on national TV. This dude played this woman on national TV. And guys, I don't think that he did it to be malicious. I think he just got on this show with this woman that he probably really cared about. And maybe the family found out what he was doing and made him come home and either tell him that they found a wife for him, but he was gone for two weeks and he did not contact her. I think he got married. I think Samit went and got married. And I don't, like again, I don't think he did it maliciously, but I think that he just had no choice. I don't think that he had a choice. I think he probably stayed in the show for Jenny. If that's the case, if he is married at this point, I think he probably just felt bad and just needed to and wanted to finish out the show for Jenny. I don't know, guys. I just feel so bad for this woman because we all wanted it to be something different, right? We all wanted it to work out because Miss Jenny is so sweet and Summit seemed like he really loved her and I think he does. I just don't think that he is strong enough to say no to his family and that this is who he wants to be with you know what I mean even if the family doesn't approve and again I'm an American watching this right so I'm only going off of my knowledge of Indian culture which is very limited or where Samit is from which is extremely limited and I'm also speaking from my own experiences which are not limited you know what i mean like i can whoever i want to be with my family got to deal with it you know what i mean like i i have those freedoms so oh gosh this is really this is a hard one everybody else this one and corey and evelyn was really hard for me this week like not hard like oh my gosh i can't get through it but i just really felt bad i feel like we've been on the journey with these characters and these are still real people who are whether it's overproduced or not i think it's too early in this show for them to start producing storylines like this except for rebecca and zied i feel like i get a little scam thing from the both of them but i think it's too early in the show the cast is just too fresh to really know how to start manipulating storylines i think a lot of this is 99.9 .9 true concerning these stories except for rebecca and zied and i am um, i just feel bad i feel really 
really bad for Miss Jenny. And I also feel bad for Samit because I don't think he would have done all of this if he knew he was getting married while the show was filming. Can you imagine the family watching this show right now? Are we going to get an update with Samit? Y'all, this some good casting. Say what you want about this show, but this is some good casting. And before I wrap up Miss Jenny and Samit, when Jenny's daughter was telling Samit that if you love my mom, you have to stand up to your family and you have to tell them that this is what you want. And if they don't agree with it, then they cannot be a part of your life because I went through that with my mother. When I came out and told my mother that I was gay, she was not on board and they didn't talk for like eight months. And she said that I let my mom know if you cannot accept me or my partner, you cannot be in my life. And I think before she went too far and you know, put too much of their business out there. Jenny jumped in and was just like, and I got it. You know what I mean? And I, I changed my ways and you know, she was starting to, you know, do a little damage control for her own self because her daughter was telling a lot and about how Jenny didn't agree and how Jenny didn't talk to her. And I think Jenny caught that and was just like, you know what, this is stuff that stays in the living room. So let me start telling you how I evolved and where we are at now. We don't have to get too much into what the past was like. Jenny jumped in real quick before her daughter went any further with that explanation of Jenny not being accepting of her being gay. Smart, Jenny. I was just like, oh, this was a good time to jump in and cut this conversation off, sis, because baby, the fandom would have had you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But that aside, this was a really sweet moment because I felt Jenny's daughter like really open up, not just to, you know, Samit, but also open up to all of us and just really talk about a family who had differences and was able to heal and move forward and look at where they are at today. And this show hits you with the Degrassi background music and you're just like, oh my God. It was a really emotional scene. And I was really, really thankful for Jenny's daughter in that moment for just opening up herself like that and really, you know, recognizing a community that is still really going through you know, issues with being identified and treated humanely, specifically within the United States. Like she, she was just like, this is who I am. This is what I went through. And I put my foot down. And if she was not going to be accepting of me, then she could not have any of me. And I love that. I said, yes, sis. Yes. And she did that to let Samit know families can move on. Families can heal from differences. You need to do the same. You need to man up and do the same. But he can't do it, sis. Because he's already married to somebody else, Samit. This, if this is the case, my God, today, y'all, I'm going to do my best. I am going to do my best to get that review up that night. Because I am going to be on Twitter from the moment the credits roll from the beginning of that show to the end. Because I know when it is released that Samit is married, Twitter is going to be a mess. And unfortunately, Miss Jenny, I can't wait. I can't wait. You guys come here for some jokes and some, you know, some wise insights that I may have about this show. So I'm not going to spend any time on Corey and Evelyn. Here is why. In this episode, Corey lost his father. There's nothing that I can say about that, that I, um, that will suit this channel. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is mainly a review comedy channel, you know what I mean? And I just, Corey lost his father, his twin, you know what I mean? And I felt uh, really bad for him. You know, it's just, when you lose a parent, there's really no words, you know what I mean? You can see that Corey was really struggling and I just really felt for him in that moment as well because I realized he had to relive this all over again with this show, you know? So it was just, it's not really anything that I can really talk about you know Evelyn was obviously there to uh, support him and I'm thankful that she was because he needed something you know what I mean especially from somebody that he's really deeply and madly in love with guys because on his Instagram he is always posting these messages and dedications to Evelyn and even his latest Instagram posts when the last episode premiered because he knew that she probably was not going to be well liked. He posted a picture of them at some wedding or whatever and under the picture he just went on and on and on about how much he loves this woman. I didn't see none of that on Evelyn's page but Corey is just really, 
you know, into this woman. So I was just happy that she was, you know, saying some kind things to him and just really helping him through that moment because he didn't want to leave her. He wanted to be there with her. Evelyn's his heart. He really, really loves her. And the only thing I can say about that is like, girl, if you don't want the dude, let him go. You know what I mean? If you don't love him like that, the way he loves you, let him go and let him give all that love to a woman that really wants all of Corey. But I am thankful, Evelyn, that you and your eyelashes, because can we... <laughs> I couldn't get out of this. I couldn't get out. I was trying to move forward, but them eyelashes. I said, sis. <laughs> like, mother's eyelashes were on fleek. Like, she was ready. She was ready for this scene. Like, she was. <laughs> oh, Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> she was just happily packing his stuff. Oh, Corey, please come home and find some love with a Mormon woman. Wait a minute. Guys, I just had an epiphany. Corey, I know you say, you know, I know you said on your Instagram that you're not really into the full figure women, but on Love at the Lockup, there is a woman looking for or in desperate need of a Mormon white husband. Andrea from Love After Lockup season what? One? Yeah, season one from Salt Lake City, Utah. She's looking for a black roughneck, but she needs a white Mormon. Sir, that's just speak. Reach out to her. You can find her in these reality TV streets and you and her need to link up. Because y'all both looking for the same thing. You're just looking for it in total opposites. Y'all need to find each other. Andrea and Corey can work. Y'all can work. That's all I can really say about Corey. Because this was a, it's a hard episode to watch. It's probably going to be, the next two episodes are probably going to be even harder. Because, you know, this dude is going to be dealing with the loss of his father. And he has to film this freaking show because he signed this contract. So, uh, yeah, this was, this was hard to watch so i'm also glad that the show just put it in to let us know about what was going on with him but they you know let that story rest and they moved on to other people because because it's just not fair to really you know film this guy's mourning process so yeah. sorry for your loss corey thank you for inviting us in to your world for that time my condolences sense sense condolences condolences sorry baby sorry Ji Hoon and anime Avril Lavigne. Let's talk about this couple. Here's the thing, right? I agree with the both of them and then I disagree with the both of them because Devin bringing her fresh out the womb child on a long flight from America to Korea to be with her fiance at this point. Or have they gotten married yet? Have Ji Hoon and Devin gotten married? Well, anyway, her baby father. She comes to be with him and it seems like she has been the only one in the relationship that has been responsible because Ji Hoon and his parents are talking about how he's so childish and he even laughs about it like he's this boy child, like that's what his family calls him, right? So she is doing just about everything on her end. She right. and Ji Hoon have discussed what needed to be done and he's told her that he has done this, but he hasn't. Like he lied to her and told her that he had a place. He just revealed to her that he quit his job and he's trying to get some more money. She's thinking that they're coming to see his parents for one day. And then they're going to move on to the apartment that he prepared for but them. But it's later revealed that he didn't do anything. He did not do anything that was asked of him. The thing about it is I get Devin being very frustrated, right? I totally understand it because Jihoon doesn't listen to her. Even with this whole car seat situation, like he is an hour late to pick her up. She has been traveling with her newborn child for hours on this flight. She is dehydrated, she is uncomfortable, and she is tired. She has to go get her luggage by herself with this baby. And then she has to wait at the airport after all of this traveling for an hour because Jihoon is late because he ordered a car seat 
for the car. He didn't know how to put it in. The delivery was late. He was on his way to get a new car seat. His dad called him and told him that the delivery finally got there. He turned around to get the car seat only to get there to go pick up Devin and she already had one. And she said that she told him. She told him that she had a car seat. Like he just does not listen to her or maybe there's a communication barrier. Something is going on because she says things. She talks to him. They have a conversation about what they're going to do. She does everything on her end and he does not do any of it. You know what I mean? He missed the birth of his child because he does not listen. She told him, she said, the baby might come early. Don't buy a ticket yet. He went and bought a ticket and he missed the birth of his child. And he's sitting there watching his child be born on a freaking computer talking about how he's a bad dad. And we all felt sorry for him. But if you go back and think about it, he could have been there if he had just listened. But he makes these rash decisions. He does not listen to anything and he does not do what he is supposed to do as a partner. So of course, Devin is going to be frustrated, right? And I understand it and I get it. But then I'm just like, Devin, why were you having unprotected sex with a man that you barely knew? Like you also have to take responsibility for that as well. Yes, you know, we're all human beings and I get it as a woman, I understand. When you are ovulating, no man in your eyesight is safe, okay? I totally understand, but you are being very irresponsible then with your body with someone that you barely know. Like, you didn't know that he ain't have no money before you got pregnant. Like, you know what I mean? So you also have to take responsibility in that as well. You can't be mad at this man because he's not who you wanted him to be. Since you shouldn't have been having unprotected sex with him if you wanted a different kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yes, things happen. You know, yes, there are oops babies. I'm an oops baby, okay? <laughs> My parents did the best that they can do. But it's just like you also, I just feel like Devin just does not take any responsibility for this situation also coming to pass as well. Like you're trying to make this guy prepare all of these things for you and your baby in Korea, but you didn't really talk to him before you got pregnant by him to see if he could even provide. You didn't know that, but you was having sex with him. And I get it, everybody does this, but it's like, you can't then be mad at him if he doesn't have everything that you want. Because if you just would have talked to him instead of jumped up on his little Jihoon, you probably would have figured that out and would have made different decisions. But you didn't. So you also have to take the brunt of that frustration as well. Yes, Jihoon is a boy child. He was a boy child before you had sex with him. He's still a boy child. He's not going to automatically just grow up and be... First of all, he's in his 30s. I was like... Now, listen, sir, I understand nobody is prepared for a child, but you, who do you got to grow up quick? Okay. But he's going to make a lot of mistakes. He's going to make a lot of mistakes. He's going to get on your nerves a lot of times because you already have a child. You know how to be a parent. He doesn't know how to be a parent and you two barely know each other. You barely know each other. It seems like this couple really enjoys having sex. Like this couple is really, um, I'm not saying that they don't like each other or that, or that they're not in love. It seems like the majority of their relationship has been a lot of physical touch. And, you know, and listen, it's hard to break up with somebody when the sex is good. You know what I mean? They probably was both like, this is nice. We like what we're doing. What's your name again? I don't care. Let's get to it. That's how they probably ended up in this situation. But I do think that there is love and care there and they're trying to make the situation work. I just think that Devin needs to just give Jihoon a bit more of a break because one, he's a stranger to you, to be quite honest with you, and you got more experience than he does. So there has to be some give and take and understanding. You can't be cussing him out in all of your scenes and cussing him out in your confessionals because he's not doing what you wanted him to do. You don't know him. You know what I mean? Well, you got to like... Cuss yourself out too. You can't just cuss out Jihoon. That's my only issue. I feel like she constantly just cusses him out and talks about what he's not doing. And I'm like, well, girl, you didn't have to be in this situation. You chose this. You chose to move to Korea. You can't be mad that y'all living in a studio apartment with his parents. I will say this though. I got her being a little pissed off because one, you told me that you had the place. Not only do you not have the place, you're telling me that we have to stay here and live with your parents for a few months until you're able to save up some money 
for us to move, but you don't have no job. So now, Devin, Jihoon, the baby, what's the baby name? Targaryen? Targaryen, Drusilla, Jihoon's mother and father, and Jihoon's adorable little dog. All of these people are going to be living in this Ikea display section. Because can we tell the truth and shame the devil? All of that furniture is from Ikea. How I know? Because baby, let me tell you something. I know when I see a hymnes or hymnes, hymnes, y'all know what I'm talking about. That hymnes uh, bedroom set from Ikea <laughs> that every girl has had in her room either as a teenager or as like a young adult in their 20s. Let me tell you something, that Hymnes bedroom set got me through all of my 20s. It's a really good bedroom set. The dresses are nice and sturdy, lots of space. It's cute. It travels well. Listen, my room look cute. For what? $300? For that nice little sturdy set that I had for like a decade? Work. Work. There's an Ikea in Korea. Ikea getting that money. You know what? Now I want to go. Because could you imagine what that Ikea looks like in Korea? Girl, the furniture for cheap? We got to take a little trip. Listen up, Anime Avril Levine. Sis, you got to move back to America with your baby. It's still enough time for you to get your job back. You need to call your boss and be like, listen, I made a mistake. It was my hormones. Please don't judge me. Let me have my job back. Move in with your parents so they can help you with them kids and wait for Jihoon to mature a bit and figure out how to support you and your family because right now he cannot do it and you can't cuss him out because he just don't have it in him. He he has not had any kind of responsibilities like this. He's a man in his 30s who lives at home who says that he's a boy child. He's not ready to be a father, although he is. Like there are a lot of people who are not ready to be parents and make it work. He loves his son. He really, really does, but I just think that he needs a lot of maturing to be able to get where Devin desires for him to be. And when I say a lot more maturing to do, I think she needs to, you know, meet Jihoon six and seven years later. Like, not right now. He not going to be what you want, sis. Early 40s, Jihoon, that's what you want. Not this one. Not this one who quits his job right before his baby moves out. I'm like, you quit your job. What you going to do? What you going to do? Them adorable parents can only do but so much. And isn't he taking care of them as well? Listen, Devin, I hope you got a round trip ticket, girl. And Jihoon is sweet. He not reliable. Rini and Paul, can I just say that Paul's mama will not be inconvenienced at all? She will not be inconvenienced, no matter what it is, because Paul calls his mother, like any kid would do, to vent to her and like get some advice because Karini has now gone into labor and she doesn't want Paul in the room. She just wants it to be her mother. So he calls his mom because he's just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I need help. And Paul's mom is listening to him and she's just like, mm-hmm. Well, baby, you need to fix that situation because I want to come out there and see the baby, but I'm not coming out there in any mess. If it's a mess, I won't come out there. You know I won't come out there. So fix the situation so I can come out there and see my grandbaby. I'm like, ma'am, did you listen to anything he said? <laughs> she said, I heard everything you said, but I'm not coming out there unless you fix that situation. <laughs> Paul's mom said, I've raised you. You are an adult. I am done. She is done and she will not be inconvenienced by Paul any further. <laughs> She's done and I love it. I love it. <laughs> this woman said, I'm done enough. I'm good. I'm not giving you no more money. I'm not sponsoring her. And I am not seeing my grandchild if I got to be frustrated by you in this messy situation with this woman. Fix it or I'm not coming out there. I said, she made this whole situation about her. He didn't call her for advice because his child is about to be born. And she said, well, that's great. I'm not coming out there if the situation ain't fixed. Love you. Here's a lock of my hair. Bye. <laughs> I'm walking very lightly with this subject because I have not had children. I have never been in labor. I have never given birth to a child. So I do not know this, right? I was feeling a kind of way 
about Karini not allowing Paul to be in the delivery room to see his child be born, right? Because Paul is sitting over here very emotional. His son is about to be born and he can't be in the room. Like the mother doesn't want him in there, who's also his wife. And he's very emotional about it, but he doesn't want to upset her. So he did what um, she asked him to do. And um, I don't think Karini should be forced to let him be in there. I just felt bad for the guy. Like he really wanted to see his child be born. He really wanted to be here, there to help her. And she didn't want it, right? And I felt bad. I was just like, Karini, I don't think that's fair. But then I thought about it. Paul is really annoying. And he has really stressed Karini out. And I think she feels like he was the reason why she lost the first child because he really, really stressed that girl out. And she mentions it a lot this season, how stressful he is to her and how stressful he is to the baby. So maybe she just did not want somebody in there while she's in the process of bringing life into this earth. She just does, she just does not want to be disturbed by somebody who can really like mess up her mood, right? So I see both sides and I feel for both people. I wish they would have been in a better place where he could be there to support his wife, but um, she doesn't want it. And I, I kind of felt bad for uh, Paul. Not kind of, I did. I did, I'm gonna be honest with you. I felt bad because I don't wanna see my child being born, but then I'm just like, you stress this woman out her whole pregnancy. You stress her out the first pregnancy. She just don't want you nowhere near her. What do you guys think? Specifically for the mothers in this, um, in my subscriber family, how do you feel about that? Do you think it was fair for Karini to keep Paul out of the delivery room or do you understand and would you have done the same thing? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Tiffany and Ronald, shout out to all of my viewers from uh, South Africa who gave me the 411 on what is going on, on why we never see Tiffany and Ronald or, or their family or whatever interact with anybody black in South Africa. I was not aware that um, that there were still a lot of, um, that there was still a lot of, you know, nasty residue from apartheid that really kept uh, white South Africans and black South Africans separate. So thank you all. A lot of you guys gave me some really interesting tea and also you know made me go you know do my own little bit of research and uh wow wow and i'm kind of i don't know my knowledge of this i'm i don't has really like made me look at tiffany especially a certain way and ronald okay but tiffany i'm just like I don't know because then remember earlier when we had that scene like earlier in the season we had this scene of Tiffany uh having a play date with Daniel and one of his best friends and she was saying she wanted to do more of this because this is what Daniel's life is going to be and I was just like oh so you just wanted to bust in a black child for him to like have have an experience of what South Africa might be. So that, I was already looking at her sideways by that. And then to know that she like willingly decided to live with this man and in this area that's like segregated. I don't know, I feel some, and you know, it, I'm black. So of course I have a totally different perspective so I'm just I'm feeling some sort of way about this couple period ever since I you know got all that information I just watched them and I'm just like mm, mm. what them conversations like when the cameras ain't there you know what I mean like I'm trying to like whew, I don't know I just see them now and I'm like Tiffany I'm getting something else from you now but I've been side eyeing her I'm telling you People will always reveal themselves. I've been side-eyeing Tiffany since that play date with the black child. Anyway, Tiffany and Ronald are having a little tiff because it looked to me, guys, I have to be honest with you, Ronald was very antsy and it could be the fact that he was just trying to get to wherever he wanted to get to before they closed, right? But he just seemed very 
it was like such a need. It wasn't like I'm, I'm, I'm rushing because the place is about to close. It just looked like he needed to do something. Like he needed to fulfill some kind of desire and he didn't want her to be there. You know what I mean? Like Tiffany was saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And he was just, I don't know. He was very uneasy to me. So for me, I felt like he was either going to gamble or do something like get high or what, like something he was going to go do. And he was very frustrated that Tiffany insisted on coming. But here is where I got pissed at Tiffany because I'm just like, you don't trust the man, right? You know you have his card. Why would you leave your wallet at home if you already mentioned that you had his card? So something for me, I felt like was being left out because she mentioned that she had his card. She mentioned that she didn't want him to leave without her because she wanted to be with him because she had not yet trusted him. So she wanted to be in his travels. Why would you get in the car knowing that you have his card and say, oh, I didn't bring my wallet when he's halfway there. I understood Ronald's frustration in that moment because I was frustrated with her. I was just like, why would you, what's going on? Like, what are you doing? It just, something didn't add up for me in that situation. And also Tiffany, you knew that Ronald had these issues before you got pregnant and before you married him, you knew that you were marrying an addict who had relapsed before you got to South Africa with your son. So you don't trust this man. You want to travel with him. You want to make sure that he does not relapse. And because if he does, you, your son, and now his child is leaving. But you didn't have to be in that situation. So it's like you can't be mad at the man and treat him like a toddler and say that you don't trust him because you done moved your life down here, you married him, and now you got pregnant by him. So I'm just not understanding what's going on here. You're treating him like this. You're saying you don't trust him, but you did all this stuff with him. So I just, I don't know. I just feel like you can't punish him for being him if you chose him just the way that he is. It kind of gives me that thing that women do all the time. And I'm just like, we got to get out of this. Women think that men will change for them. And they think that they can change them by, you know, probably holding a child over their head or probably threatening to leave or all of these things. But a man is only going to do what he wants to do. If Ronald wants to gamble again, he'll gamble again. He has to not want to do that for him. It won't take you or a child or his mother, none of that stuff. He has to want to make that change. You hold in his car, treating him like a toddler, inconveniencing him, none of that it's going to help him be a better person. You know what I mean? If, if you are in this marriage with this man, at some point you gotta trust him, especially now since you wouldn't have had a whole baby with him. Can we talk about how Ronald is terrible at apologies? <laughs> Tiffany is crying. Her little scene girl makeup is just dripping down her face and he's just like, so are, are you over it? <laughs> This woman is crying. She's scared because you were driving like a bat out of hell while she's a couple months pregnant and you don't care. Like she's crying her heart out to him and he's just like, all right, babe, let's move on. And she's like, let's move on. No, this just happened. It's not okay. Oh gosh, I understand this whole 90 day fiance thing that you have to do it in such a, in a certain amount of time. I'm just like, there has to be another way because you really can't get to know anybody in 90 days. Like these people, because they love somebody or they wanna see where their relationship goes, they're getting married to people that they barely know because this is the thing with Tiffany and Ronald. They barely know each other, but now they're married and they have a baby. So they're just like figuring out each other. And this is the first time that Tiffany has probably seen Ronald like this. This is probably the first time that she's ever seen him like chasing a high. Any person out there who has somebody in their life who is an addict, you know. You know when they are itching for a fix and how they get antsy and they, you know, they jump to anger really, really quickly. And if you've been in that situation with them long enough, you know it's not about you. You know it's about them fighting their demons within because they're fighting wanting to get this thing and then the shame of the desire for that. 
and then also finding the fact that they can't get it. So there's like a lot going on. They're very antsy and they're very angry. And I felt like, and I felt like that is what I was seeing in Ronald. I think Tiffany's presence with him interceded whatever he was going to do for the better. I think her being there stopped whatever he was probably going to do when she was not with and maybe after that he wanted to talk to her and move forward because he doesn't want to talk about the past that's his thing also has to realize that yes dude you're clean now and you've moved on from that right but just because you have moved on does not mean that the people that you have hurt have moved on or have healed in a way where they are able to finally trust you now your mother is your mother you can rob her and she will still be your mother she will still care for you and she will still protect you tiffany don't really know you she really don't. So you got to be a little bit more delicate with her because yes, she has your baby in her womb right now. Yes, she says that she loves you, but she ain't your mother. She's not going to walk through hell for you. At some point, she's going to realize that she don't have to and get ghost, right? So you have to work on that relationship a lot differently than you would with your mother who will forgive you no matter what. So he really has to work on that because that apology to Tiffany was trash anyway that's where this episode ends for me what did you think about this episode i thought it was cool i really really did i guess i was expecting more because of the trailer so i was expecting to see miss jenny you know falling apart over some meat like i came to this episode heated i came to this episode ready to fight some meat but that didn't happen that will probably happen next week which i think is the season finale you know in the comment section below if you know when the um season finale is because i tried to find it and i still like these episodes come up really weird 90 day fiance and love after lockup episodes they come up really weird so i just never know because the way they come up it doesn't it doesn't come up the, the season finale and the premiere dates never are accurate online like never accurate i don't know if maybe it's because the show was still being filmed and edited while we're watching you know what i mean while we're watching the season they're probably still you know adding things and taking things away maybe that's it but i can never find the accurate season finale or the accurate premiere date if you know that information let us just know in the comment section below and if you like what you see here please like comment subscribe and share and i will see you next week for the following episode of love after lockup 90 day fiance the other way around listen it is what it is love you guys bye